Three steps to recalibrating our threat sensors. It's awkward out there. I'm Rick from Thriving Now, and my co-facilitator for this session is Kathy Vartuli from the Intimacy Dojo. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Rick. I'm really excited about this talk. Um, I most some of you may know I have an abuse background. And so for me, humans were scary. I grew up with humans just not being safe to interact with. And when I was kind of, I moved, I was meeting nice people and I was still connecting with them the way I had learned to connect with people that they were scary. So when I was, you know, my thirties, I was still interacting with people as if the threat sensors, my threat parameters for living in an abusive household, I left them the same. And it cut down on so much of my interaction with other people and it stressed me out. So it was just very, very stressful. And so we're in a time when things are very stressful and there's a lot of threat out there. We're constantly being aware of danger. And when we can allow our threat level to rise and fall with what's actually happening in the moment, we give our, our body a chance to relax. We give our mind a chance to be de decompressed when it's appropriate so we can enjoy the sunshine. Or the other morning I went out and I have strawberries growing in my backyard and I just sat there quietly with my cat with a handful of, hand, of sun warm strawberries and I let myself get the nourishment from that moment. And I know that sometimes it's really hard to allow our system to adjust to things that are changing so much like now. And so the fact that you're here, I think that's a beautiful gift you're giving yourself and those that you're interacting with. So if you'd like to just take a moment and just appreciate that you're the kind of person that on a Friday night, you'd show up here and you'd be willing to look at something that a lot of people aren't even aware is an issue. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to get through, they're eating pizza, drinking beer, trying to distract themselves with Netflix. And you're doing something very proactive something very engaged that's really letting your system heal and be, and be more powerful going forward, not just through the pandemic, but through the rest of your life. You're giving yourself clues and insights, and we're gonna do a lot of tapping to help you re-regulate your system so that you can react to what's there versus what used to be or what other people might be talking about using your own system, your own guidance. And I just think that's a beautiful gift to give the world. So thank you for that. And I'm always so delighted to, to share this, this space with Rick because he was the person that more than anyone helped me recalibrate my threat sensors so that I could go out and interact with people as they were rather than seeing my abuser on everybody. So I could start connecting with people again and really enjoying the moments of my life. So he's such a powerful and intuitive teacher. And I'm just honored to be here with you, Rick. Thank you, Kathy. And you, you reflected that for many of us in our past, we had a segment of time and maybe it's continuing um, that, but th for me, I know that there was a segment of time where my threat sensors had kind of ratcheted up. So maybe when I was most relaxed, they were like a four or five on a zero to uh, scale. <laughs> And most of the time when I was working and engaging and doing things, they would be up at around in seven, eight, nine, usually eight or nine by the end of the day as I got tired and was pushing myself. And so the first step here is awareness. And we talked about a meter, our threat sent, well, in the email we sent uh, and in the invitation, there was a meter a level of fear, a level of arousal, a level of threat that we're operating under. And by one of the magical things I think about energy techniques that use a zero to 10 scale, it's not about being accurate. It's a sense of relativity. Mm -hmm. So for you right now, you've shown up in a Zoom room. Maybe this is old old school for you. You've been doing it for a few months now. Um, and maybe this is new. And you've spent a week this last week, whatever was going on in your life. Right now, in step one, what's your awareness of your threat level? 
And if you have something that you can write it down. Or leave it in the chat if you're willing to do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. because, and if you're new to Zoom, you can just hover your mouse over whoever's speaking space and at the bottom will pop up a little, right in the center is a little cartoon box that says chat. And if you click on that, you can type where you're at so zero is you're very relaxed. 10 is you're just like ready to go climb the ceilings and, and bounce off the walls. And so I just put in the chat that I'm at about a six. Now, that's a, scale, that's a six on Rick's scale now. <laughs> this would be like so chill, I'm ready to go to sleep, Rick in you know, 1999. <laughs> But for me right now, I'm activated I, in a good way. So like threat, activation, but there's a lot of like our community today at 5 p.m. went into our next phase. And there's a lot of people who are really scared. And because I'm a sensitive person, there's a part of me right now that's vibing with the people that are like, no. And there's a, there's a part of me that's vibing with the people that are, I used to have horses. And when they would be inside for just two or three days because it was freezing rain and that is not good for horses any more than viruses are great for people, <laughs> you'd let them out and they would bolt. They would almost knock you over if you had to be really careful not to get in their way because they were going to bolt and kick and slide and, and do all kinds of things. And sometimes they would get hurt. And there's a part of me that's vibing with that. And, and there's a part of me that's aware that, you know, my partner and the boy are saying bedtime stories. And so like, I'm integrating all of that in my energy system. <laughs> and how is it for you? And, and I, by I just, being aware, go ahead. Oh, I just, I think that sometimes I've been doing um, a Tantra festivals and different, uh, different virtual events. And I think there's sometimes a status thing. Oh, I'm so chill. I think this group is much more authentic, but I want to just say there's nothing right or wrong about being stressed out. It's yeah. really just noticing authentically where you are and, and just taking it from there. Cause I, the, the festival I was at, someone was like, Oh, I never react to things. I'm really cool. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting because I see like the worry on your face. I imagine that you're actually quite worried, but who am I to say? But I think there's a certain status that we get caught up in. And I just, I really imagine this group is very authentic. And I just want to just say, hey, it's okay. If you're feeling a lot of stress, that doesn't mean you're not evolved or you haven't really worked on yourself. It just means this, this stuff is hitting you. And like Rick said, sometimes the people around you can be strongly influencing that. I know the first few weeks when we were shut down out here, I would get up at midnight and work until three because it was the only time I felt quiet around me because there was so much, I was just, it felt like the air was filled with anxiety, not just, for, you know, I was nervous, but like from around me. And I could, I did some of Donna Eden's zip up methods. I did tapping, but it just was a quiet time for me. So there's nothing, I just want to say there's nothing wrong. And yeah. I just appreciate all of you for sharing with each other where we're at because I think that normalizes it for us. Yeah, thank you. And Kathy and I use um, an emotional technology, I call it, um, called EFT tapping. If you're new to that, after the call or later, you can see our free manual at thrivingnow.com slash tapping, T-A-P-P-I-N-G. And if you're seeing us do things like this, these are meridian points that are on the body. They're natural comfort points. You know, when, we, when we're thinking or we're going like this or like, oh my gosh, these are, these are natural comfort points on the body. And so by sharing, tuning in and tuning into my six and gently tapping these collarbone points and not to try to be less than a six, but inviting my body to find the calibration for right here, for right now. 
I'm amongst I, some of you I've never met. Some of you are old, old friends and other people we've co-created together on calls like this so many times I can't count. And sometimes I've noticed that if I was at a one or two and I'm letting myself like tune my, my sensors, it might actually go up. Why is that? Like maybe I'm getting ready to go out and, and drive and I haven't driven for a long time. Maybe I'm going to be thinking and planning for an event tomorrow where we're going to go out and might be meeting people. What is involved? What feels right to me? I think sometimes too, when we just slow down, we become more aware. I think of it kind of as humans tend to numb out to things that are around them all the time. Just like if you were wearing a shoe that was too tight, after a while you kind of numb out. But if you take that shoe out, off, and your the blood flow comes back, or we're just bringing awareness to where we are, it may feel a little more intense. That actually doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It means that we're actually being with what is rather than kind of numbing or dissociating from what's there. Mm -hmm. so. Would you lead us in a tapping on this awareness, just allowing ourselves to be aware of where we're, where we're calibrated mm -hmm. at, any, at any given point and yeah, finding that useful it. information? Yeah, and I just, to normalize it for people, we talk about a lot about the primitive brain, the survival brain. And I think that's so important. And I want to do some tapping on that because we have the, the, some people call it the monkey brain or it's the lizard brain and the monkey lizard brain, like brain, the survival. Yeah, it's, in, it's it, the, the brain stems part of it. There's a part of our brain that's really focused on helping us survive. It's looking for threats all the time. And there's certainly threats out there often, but right now our whole society seems really focused on it. So the survival brain is probably more on alert than it would normally be. There's this threat out there that we can't see. We can't see like a, a, a lion sitting. Like I look around the room, I can't see if there's any virus in my room. I'm pretty sure there isn't because no one has been in my house except me for 10 weeks. I'm pretty certain we're okay. But my brain can't look around in the room and say, oh, there's no virus here. So that feels really scary to that part of our brain. It wants to keep us safe. And it normally does that for people that are new. It has one first choice is always to run away. So if there's a danger, if we can run away, we, we, we can serve ourselves, we're not injured. If we successfully escape, we've succeeded. That part of our brain goes, ha, ah, no trauma, we won. The next thing it will try to do if it can't run away is try to fight. It will fight off the uh, attacker. Now, if we can't fight, there's not, I don't have, I can't hit the virus in the face. Um, I, I can spray with Lysol, that feels like I might be helping to win it. But if I can fight and win, then I feel like I've succeeded. And the last option is I freeze. If I can't fight or if run away, I freeze. And that's a normal reaction, animals do it too. The thing is animals will naturally shake off that response once the threat is gone. So they have videos of polar bears and chicks and then rabbits. They, they're traumatized and they wake up from like a dart or whatever happened and they move around and they hop around and they make noise and they burn off all those chemicals and they allow their system to reset. And when it does that, what happens is the cognitive brain starts talking to the, the survival brain and registers that everything is done and recalibrates what's going on. Humans have been taught to stop that recalibration period. We are told, pull it together or I'll give you something to, to cry about. Big boys, big girls don't cry. We're taught as small children, we can't kick the teacher, we can't run away from the teacher, and we're kind of frozen in our system. And those are, so our system is kind of conditioned to this freeze response. Yeah, let's do and, some tapping on that. Yeah, so take a nice slow deep breath. And if you can, get present with your body if that feels good to you. Notice your feet on the floor. I love to notice the temperature around my toes, the air, how the air feels around them. Notice the texture under them. That helps me get in my body for this. And notice wherever you're sitting, how you're supported. You don't actually have to do anything to be supported. The universe is holding you and loving you. We're going to start in the karate chat point. Even though my survival brain is pretty activated right now. And just repeat while you tap. Even though my survival brain is pretty activated right now. I am taking pretty good care of myself anyway. I'm 
taking pretty good care of myself anyway. Even though my survival, survival brain is not sure how to keep me safe. Even though my survival brain is not sure how to keep me safe. I'm here doing this silly tapping thing with these other people. <laughs> I'm here doing this silly tapping thing with these other people. And they say it could help me. And they say it could help me recalibrate <laughs> my threat sensors. Even though my survival brain has been really activated for a while. Even though my survival brain has been really activated for a while. I'm open to re-examining what's scary. I'm open to re-examining what's scary. And letting myself relax when it's appropriate. And letting myself more deeply relax when it's appropriate. Just top of the head, there's points all over. Whatever feels good is great up here. My survival brain is pretty activated. My survival brain is pretty activated. Next point is of the eyebrow right above your nose, with the beginning of the eyebrow here. It hasn't relaxed in a while. It has not relaxed completely in a while. Going to the outside of um, the eye where the eyebrow ends on the outside post you blink, that's not into the temple on that bony part here. Hey, primitive brain. Hey, primitive brain. You've been working really hard. You've been working really, really hard. Under the eyes, under the people on the bony part here. I really appreciate how much you care. I really appreciate how much you care. Under the nose is between the top of the bottom lip and the bottom of the nose. Thank you for watching out for me. Thank you for watching out for me. Thank you for really trying. Thank you for really trying. Chin point, it's in the crease in our chin right here. I really appreciate how much effort you put into keeping me safe. I really appreciate how much effort you put into keeping me safe. And the collarbone point is where the, we have two collarbone points right here. We're going to go out and down about an inch in each direction. It's a soft area here. Some people call it the sore spot. You can tap with one or both hands. I am here with you now. I am here with you now. And we're actually safe in this moment. We're surprisingly safe in this moment. Under the arm, it's about four inches down from the armpit where the woman's bra, a woman's bra would go. I appreciate you and you're not alone. I appreciate you, primitive brain, and you're not alone in this. <laughs> Top of the head. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. We can do it together. We can do it together. And then take a nice deep breath. <sighs> <sighs> And if you have things coming up, thoughts or objections coming up, those are great things to write down because those are things you can tap on. And for me, sometimes they fade away pretty quickly. So I encourage you, if you notice them, you can put them in the chat or you can type, write them down. But those are things that our subconscious may be holding on to and saying, oh, we really can't be safe or what about this? And just acknowledging those and noticing them, pulling from them from our subconscious into our conscious gives us more control. When they're spinning around in our head in our subconscious, they're just making a lot of noise. When they're written down, all of a sudden we have a lot more control and we make choices about how we do that, what we do with them. So that was step two, appreciating tapping and appreciating the primitive brain. We, none of us would be here if our primitive brain really wasn't paying attention. It picks up things. It, it is capable of picking up an energy that makes the hair, if you have any on the back of your neck, rise when there's a threat that's not even something you've seen or necessarily heard, but an energy that you've felt. Those threat sensors that the primitive brain uses aren't located just in the brain. It's not just our five senses. It's everything, including visceral reactions, picking up things in ways that are below our normal consciousness. And so when we talk about recalibrating our threat sensors, if you're feeling stressed, but you get angry that you're all aroused, activated, um, fearful, it puts you in conflict with a part of you. Like you're like, I can't believe I'm so stressed right now. And while it seems counterintuitive to do some, and I accept myself, <laughs> and I accept my and appreciate my primitive brain. I want to be safe. 
I do. I want to be safe. And I want to be free and alive too. <sighs> My primitive brain and I are in this together. Appreciation for any part of us changes the relationship. Just like if, you know, you have another person in your life and you can get to a place of honest appreciation, even if it starts off a little strained, it starts changing the relationship. And we have a relationship with a primitive brain. A lot of people, a lot of us, I fought it for so long until it just like almost strangled me. So step one was bringing that awareness and Kathy talked about the mechanism of the primitive brain. Step two was, as weirdly as it is, tap on what you're feeling and also add some appreciation for the protection and the desire for safety, longevity, you know. And then also you'll notice when I was just quietly sort of modeling how I tap to myself, I want to be safe and I want to live fully. And I'm calibrating my sensors, all of them, to that. And let's check in with our body again and feel free to put in the chat, how, how's your threat level now? And then anything's coming up, any particular thoughts? One of the things I think is really important, Rick, when you were talking about the appreciation helping us relax, one analogy I think that's really useful is, uh, it helps me a lot, is our, the, it's true that the survival brain is not very intelligent. Our cognitive brain, the front part of our brain, is very intelligent. It can figure out things. The survival brain is very powerful, but it has the intelligence of a small dog. That's the analogy a lot of neuro, traumatologists, uh, neurologists uh, use. And if you want a small dog to calm down, does it help to tell it, you calm down, you bad dog, you're so stupid. You're so <laughs> too much, too much. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't calm it down. But saying, hey, that's, you know, hey puppy, you're okay. You're actually safe. Thank you for watching out for stuff and that you don't need to watch out for that. You know, like that particular threat is not too, not something, I see it, I hear what your concern is and let's look at what we've done to address the issue and we can let it go or whatever that is. I think that's a much more effective way. And I give you that analogy because at three in the morning when I'm very stressed, I don't always remember that. Like I've just woken up and I'm not sleeping because I'm stressed. That analogy of that small puppy, yeah, you know, yelling at it versus comforting it can help me kind of slip into that faster rather than laying there for half an hour. Why am I awake? So stupid. So, so can we move to step three? Yes. So in step three, we allow our, the broader sense of ourselves, not just our threat sensors, but also our desires and our, our sense of ourselves and how we want to be in the world. We tap for, for being responsive to what is rather than reactive. We are going to feel reactions. I, I have just, I've found certainly that if I'm being reactive, like a six was feeling reactive, right now at a four, it feels more like my sensors are out with the circle. They're out with us and what's alive for us. It actually feels like a good place. They're not even so much threat level. It's more like what's, what's our vibe right now? what's happening in our community, our circle. I've brought them in, and this is part of, for me, when I want to be responsive, I need to bring the focus into something that is, like I can put, embrace. And right, right now, this group across the world, <laughs> um, I can still, I can embrace us, and we've got We've got 23 people here right now. And, and if you're one of the people that's tuning in tomorrow, 
because that's it's the middle of the night for you. Please feel included in our embrace and feel free to comment and email us. Kathy and I both get emails to support at thrivingnow.com. And being responsive, I think, is like what, what attracted me to tapping in the first place. What actually turned me to being an emotional freedom coach was that I wanted more of my life to be responsive rather than reactive. And responsive says, okay, yeah, I could, I, I could get all activated about this. How do I want to be? How do I want to be that, um, what did you say, that... Um, I can't read my writing. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say more about step three? Um, oh, sure. So I think one of the things that really stands out for me is that when they've done studies with rats, and I know that may seem silly, but rats that were traumatized were very rigid. They had a, like, they were in that freeze mode and they were just like afraid. And they were experimenting to figure out how quickly they learned. So they had a, a bunch of rats that were traumatized and a bunch of rats that weren't traumatized and they had a cat. And the rats that were really traumatized were very, very scared. And they were very rigid about how they kept themselves safe. And so they, they had a hard time getting enough food. And they never learned new ways to deal with the cat. And actually, a bunch of them got eaten. In the other, the other group, the rats had not been traumatized. They were able to adjust to the threat. They realized that the cat quickly, that the cat wasn't always there. And when the cat wasn't there, they would quickly go out and eat whatever they wanted and then go back and hide when the cat came out. And they also played and experimented with different ways to get their needs met. And none of those rats actually got eaten by the cat. So I think that what we're doing in here is we're inviting you to, to relax our survival brain, relax the fear so that you can adjust to the threats that are really there. And I know that's really challenging because our threat level, like, what is the right thing to do? Like, for a long time, the U.S. was saying, don't wear masks. Now they say, do wear masks. And it can be a little confusing, but we want to take the best data we have at the given time. We want to look our body, our whole body be an integrating yeah. influence. Yeah. Um, and that's, and I, I think that's where, when we talk about the primitive brain, it's with deep respect for its function, but also its limits. Mm -hmm. We wanted a doorway, a, pa a tapping point, buttons to press. <laughs> Felt good to me when I first heard it. That um, allow us to, to work with, we don't turn off our sensors. Mm -hmm. We recalibrate so that we're not, it's not so loud. And so that we can hear our heart's desire, we can, we can, the knower that's in the gut, that part of us in our groin, in our pelvis, um, the wisdom, womb wisdom, non-gendered womb wisdom, <laughs> as like, oh, this is what's right for me and for the we that are doing this right now together. Mm -hmm. And... You know, our invitation is that with this, you can you can still feel yourself and navigate this in a responsive way. I'd like to do some tapping on that yeah, if you're open to it. And and I modeled with Kathy the freedom to change words, add a few, change a few. That's always welcome with tapping. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. A part of me is reacting. Even though part of me is reacting. It's reacting to so many things. It is reacting to so many things. And I'm not sure what my response is all the time. And I'm not sure what my response should be every time. I am asking for my own clarity in the moment. I am asking for my own clarity in the moment. In each now. In each now. And that's a skill. And that's a skill. Oh, I got to practice a skill. Oh, I got to practice a skill. Hi, bro. And I want to be responsive. And I want to be responsive. Side of the eye. Knee-jerk reactions aren't good for me. Knee-jerk reactions are not good for me. Under the eye. When my anxiety spikes, it's so hard on my system. When my anxiety spikes, it's so hard on my system. Under the nose. I want more ease. 
I want more ease. Chin, I intend to have more clarity. I intend to have more clarity. Call on. And I'll need to determine what's right for me. And I'll need to determine what's right for me. Under the arm. It's okay for me to feel into me to it's know okay. that. It's okay for me to feel into me and to know that. I think one really important thing you said there, Rick, and it mirrors what we're seeing in the chat from some people, is that it's about, like, there's a localization of that. And when we're trying to worry about the whole world, it gets very overwhelming. I think a lot of us that are drawn to thriving now in the work we do here, we're pretty sensitive people. And if we tune our sensors out to the entire world, it's very hard to take care of ourselves. When I was first learning to drive, I grew up in the country, so I was used to like one or two cars on the road. And the first time I drove on the freeway, I was trying to watch all the cars. I was so stressed, I was not a safe driver. I was not paying attention to everything. I, I couldn't pay attention to everything, and so I wasn't noticing the cars immediately around me. And luckily my grandfather noticed, and he said, no, you need to watch the cars you need to put your attention mostly on the cars right around you with a, a, a light awareness on the other things that are happening. And I think this is true here, that if we try to look at the whole world and try to take care of the whole world, it's bigger than we are. It's too much. And I really invite you to turn that over to the universe and allow your focus to come inward. You want to be aware of yourself and the signals you're getting in your body. You also want to be aware a little, you know, like some awareness of those around you that's useful. And then you can have lighter awareness elsewhere or no awareness. So can we just tap for turning it over to the universe? The other things, the things that, or do you have something you want to share? Well, no, just my, my own reaction of like turning it over to the universe. I need to, I need to say that about things that are outside of, mm -hmm. Like however my my how far my embrace can be and be healthy for me, that everything out there beyond that, I need to turn over because it's beyond what I can embrace. And if I start to try to do this, I'm knocking my I see I'm already knocking my lamp over just by trying to embrace further than. Yeah. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, it's, absolutely. We're not turning everything over to the universe. We still get to follow our own guidance and take right. care of ourselves. So the source energy gu guidance is in the we space and the me space. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff that's out there that during this time, letting, letting that be what it is and be tended to by other beings. Yeah. If that so, feels good to you. Yeah, and you can change the words, whatever, if you have a particular religion or spirituality, you can definitely change the words. I use the word universe because for me, it doesn't have a religious connotation. And I tend, I, religion I was brought up with wasn't very nice to me. So I tend to want to be a little more neutral. So but feel free to change the words as it suits you. So nice, slow, deep breath. And let yourself be in your body if that feels good to you. Feel your toes on the floor. That's a good way to ground. When we get in our head, we can spin a lot. Our body is an antenna. If we can get in our body, it tends to help our whole system downregulate a little bit. Karate chop. Even though there's a lot out there to worry about. Even though there's a lot out there I could worry about. And I want to take care of everybody. And I want to take care of everybody. I really care. I really do care. And I want everyone to be safe. And I want everyone to be safe. There's only so much I can do in my space. There's only so much I can do in my space. And me being stressed out and anxious is not actually helping anybody. And me being stressed out and anxious isn't actually helpful to anyone, including myself. What if I relaxed and helped to care of myself and those closest to me? What if I relaxed and, and what? Took care of the, myself and those closest to me. And took care of myself and those closest to me. Those I'm guided to be there for. Those I'm guided to be there for. And I turn the rest over to the universe. And I turn the rest over to the universe. Top of the head, hey universe. Hey universe. Eyebrow, I've been trying to do it all again all by myself. I've been trying to do it all again by myself. 
So out of the eye, I do that a lot. I have done that a lot. Under the eye, and I think this is bigger than me. And this is definitely bigger than me. Under the nose, would you help? Would you help? Chin, please just draw my attention to those you would have me help. Draw my attention to those you would have me help. Collarbone, and the rest I'm just going to turn over to you. And the rest I turn over to you. Under the arm, please help me keep my focus where you would have me have it. Please help me keep my focus where you would have me have it. Top of the head, and please give me moments of calm and peaceful love. And give me moments of calm and peaceful love. So I can recharge and relax. So I can recharge and relax. Nice, slow, deep breath. And recalibrate my threat sensor. <laughs> and recalibrate my threat sensors, definitely. Definitely. One of the things, I'm a scientist, I'm a PhD in engineering. And one of the things when we're recalibrating, we, we recalibrate our systems all the time. We have to have, know where zero is. If we don't know where zero is, it's not calibrated. And that means we have to be able to relax sometimes. So if you're, if you're never relaxing, it's very hard for your threat sensor to really know how dangerous is this. And that doesn't mean you're broken. It just means, hey, if I can learn to let my system actually relax sometimes, I will have a better judge of when things are actually dangerous versus my brain just reacting to everything around, my survival brain getting all wigged out and running around, you know, like, ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes back to that awareness in step one. You know, if you're, if you never go below a two, but you can kind of like see zero yeah. that way, <laughs> oh, right? Totally. It's like, oh yeah, that, that'd be really chill. Um, and you know, two's as low as you go and that's okay. Four is, four is fine. Um, and it, it builds up a sense. And, and I do this with people that, with clients who, their primitive brain is really exquisitely sensitive. Mm -hmm. And as they bring in this idea that there's a range, and as Kathy says, yeah, there's zero, which is the sensors are really quiet because the signal to noise, you know, the no everything else outside is noise that is below the threshold. It's just like, oh, I'm calibrated here. And then I'll hear the peaks of things that are important for me. If I'm saying like, oh, I, I don't actually have to put my ears out and crane my neck to, to sense far away. Um, it allows us to come back into our, our own core. We'll feel more solid. We'll feel more, more resourced. And then when we're out engaging in the world, it'll be from a more resourced place. That's the big, the big news for all of us is that this is a time where the more that we give ourselves opportunity to resource, resource ourselves, um, the more that we'll be in response. Our primitive brain won't have to poke us quite so hard to get our attention. It's like, we'll hear a whisper, like, well, maybe we want to move this way. Maybe let's wait until this afternoon to go do that. That feels better right now. It'll be a whisper. It doesn't have to grab us quite so hard. And that kind of dynamic is really beautiful. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Like if you're always having the alarm bells go on off in your survival brain, you can't hear whispers of, of gentle guidance. So maybe go right instead of left or call that person now. And that's really beautiful. One of the really amazing things is the more you practice this, the more resilient your survival brain gets. The more it says, oh, let me check in with the cognitive brain. Let me, repro let, you know, let me process this out. Um, Rick and I have a, a program called Reprogram Your Primitive Brain. Um, and that's exactly what we do. We take you through a series of exercises to releasing old traumas and allowing your brain to be really resilient. It's at thrivingnow.com forward slash primitive dash brain. So if that's something you're interested in, that there's a whole program on that. We can only do so much in an hour. And this is a great start. But if you want to go through a systematic uh, program where it really helps you reprogram that and help that resilience step in. 
um, that's a, it's, a, it's a powerful thing to do. One of the things I notice is my, it, this is very, this is human. This is what animals do it too, uh, mammals, I guess, um, or any being that can respond. If you see a bunch of squirrels playing in the front yard and one gets scared and runs, the others will all get scared and run. So I think for me, one night I made the mistake of watching the news right before I went to bed and then I fell asleep at four in the morning because my brain was spinning. When we're around people that are really scared, as Noreen said, calm is contagious. Like if we're around people that are calm and grounded, we tend to stay calm and grounded. When we're around people that are really scared and freaking out and hoarding water, we want to go out and buy 50, bottle, 50 cases of bottled water because our survival brain is saying, they see a danger I might not see. And so I want to be, you know, like I'm going to like hook onto their fear versus when we've done a lot of work, especially if it's an authority figure or some, a lot of people are reacting, our survival brain can get really caught up in that. When we've recalibrated our threat sensors, it's a lot easier to go, huh, I don't actually see the threat. I can pay attention now. I can ask them what they see as a threat, but I can make a real decision based on what's right for me. You know, it's like no one ever said that we were going to run out of water. In all the worries people had in the whole pandemic, no one ever said water is going to be an issue. Yet people were hoarding, people, they had to call the police here because Costco was down to two cases of water and people were fighting over them. And toilet paper, like the only reason there was a shortage is because people were hoarding it. So it's like our, the survival brain was actually reacting so strongly, it was creating problems we didn't already have. So I think it's very important if we can help our, that part of our brain build up the muscle of, of being able to recalibrate, to be able to calm down and say, huh, I'm not actually sure that's a real threat or am I missing something and um, is there something I should tune into? Mm -hmm. That's really a useful way to move forward. And if there, one of our awarenesses is that if there is a something that is really there for you to tune into, by calming down your, your nervous system and your biochemistry to a place where you're you can engage with your primitive brain and say hey what are you picking up on and you treat it as an information source not as the 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 decider and you check in with the rest of you what you end up doing is, is being able to navigate difficult situations and feel yourself. The primitive brain gives us a feeling like I don't even recognize myself. And that has come up. I've done a lot of work. The good news is, is that once you've done a lot of work with your primitive brain, you know, you start feeling, oh, I'm not feeling myself. I feel like I've been hijacked a bit. And that is an indicator that you can pause if you can, or you will, once you do get to a place where you run out of steam or you pause, it's like, oh, I was in my primitive brain. It's okay. But you're not having to push it away. You're not having to, to numb yourself um, in, order to, in order to be with yourself. So I, just to let you know, I, we have a few people going through the Primitive Brain Program uh, right now. And what I'm doing is there are reflections and there are questions and there are other things that come up. Some of you that are on the call have already, already have that program. If you decide to quickly scan it and pick on something that, pick up on something that you'd like to strengthen or explore again, um, if you have questions or you get stuck on something, please feel free to email me and I'll give you a quick video reply or email reply. I'm really feeling like I, I want to be supportive of the core group of people. People like us do this. We, we, we become aware of what's going on inside of us, including dynamics like the primitive brain. And we develop some, some skill, some talent with being able to, to be with it, be with the feelings in our body and soothe ourselves and ground ourselves and then be in a responsive place. And that 
I want to live in an emotional world where more of us are able to be responsive rather than reactive. And I, so a uh, thrivingnow.com slash primitive dash brain. Um, and I'll be sending that out with the replay. Again, it's, it's, I think a, a, a timely time as things are unwinding and opening up around that. And I did want to give a little, um, I'll call it a, an insider uh, um, little awareness that uh, you might find useful. Um, is that okay, Kathy? Yeah, please. So one of the things I notice is that if I go and I get myself to be responsive and I get clarity about like, oh, it's time to go to the chiropractor, okay? <laughs> And I know what I'm going to do to, that feels good to me, that fits with the rules of the office so that I feel safe. Not totally safe. I'm gonna be driving a car. I'm going, you know, but that feels good and, and congruent with me head to toe. And guess what happens? As I'm walking in, I notice someone, I'm wearing my rainbow mask, handmade for our family, by a friend of ours, and there's someone who's not wearing a mask. My primitive brain goes, they are not taking this seriously. <laughs> Judgment. Because they're, they may be really clear in the same way, but one of the things our primitive brain notices, now that we've got our decision, anyone who is less uh, into it, less, uh, tending to things is going to feel like, oh, you're not taking this seriously. You're under responsible. You're irresponsible. You're, you're a threat goes out all the way to lock them up. Right. It goes and, and beyond, right. It goes all the way in that direction. Now, someone who is really for them, to be safe going to the chiropractor. It's the third time that they've applied hand sanitizer and all they're doing is standing there in the, in the entryway. A part of me, I'll own up to it. I'm like, what's up with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's really judgmental. It comes from that part of me that wants everybody to just tune the way that I've decided <laughs> It is right for me. As I was going into the grocery store, as I was, as I was, you know, it's, it's a thing. And as I've tapped on that, like, oh, I'm viewing people, some people as overreacting and other people as underreacting. And it is only those that follow exactly what Rick has decided. I'm, I am, I'm accentuating this for effect, but it's inside. It's a real thing. It, it affects my nervous system. And so part of it is, and this is where I'd like to just do a, another tapping, just recognizing and being aware that that's part of what our primitive brain will do is it helpful for navigating a world where we just don't know. And the part of us that has clarity is not the same as being certain and certain for everybody else. Okay. That's my, that's my place to stand on it. And then where I want to soothe myself and to be able to be responsive around people that are going to be in a different place without mm -hmm. being, yeah. pardon me. Yeah. yeah. even though some people are just so irresponsible. Even though some people are just so irresponsible. They're not looking at this exactly like I am. They are not looking at this exactly like I am. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though some people are just so overreacting. Oh my God. Even though some people are just so overreacting. Oh my God. What's up with them? 
What's up with them? I, I deeply and completely accept myself. <laughs> I deeply and completely accept myself. I want to be clear what's right for me. I want to be clear what's right for me. And it's so confusing. It's so confusing. Some people feel so irresponsible. Some people feel so irresponsible. And some people feel so overreactive. And some people feel so overreactive. And it may be that way. And it may be that way. Like, Chin, like it has been for 10,000 years. Like it's been for 10,000 years. This actually isn't new. This actually isn't new. It applies to everything. It applies to everything. Pick a subject. Pick a subject. Yeah. And I want to learn to be in balance for me. And I want to learn to be in balance for me. Nice little breath. Just let that settle in. It was beautiful, right? I think that can really add to it too, because we want other people to behave correctly to give us evidence that we made the right decision. And we also don't know what their health problems are or where they're coming from. So we're making the best decision for us. And it's, it's been very frustrating. And for a survival brain, we're looking for a correlation. We're looking like, oh, I made a really good decision and everyone else is making that same decision. And when they don't, when they make different decisions, whether because of politics or health or whatever, it's like, they are wrong. Or am I wrong? Like there's, as opposed to like, maybe we're doing what's right for us. We don't know what their path is. Yeah. And that's our primitive brain. I mean, we know, I know people that if, if they wear a mask, it, it evokes an immediate panic attack. Yeah. And so if, so, and others breathing difficulties. And so here's re responsive feels like it means that, oh, that person isn't wearing a mask. I'll naturally now, I'm not going to look at them like they're repulsive and scary because I'm not there yet. I'm still in response and I might move away. And if they start coming and intersecting, I might take a couple steps back and, you know, they can't tell I'm smiling except for in my eyes and let them pass. Yeah. Now, there is a boundary. It's like, I'd, I'd like six feet. Would Does that work for you? Right. But I still don't have to go into reaction in order to navigate ease. Mm, I need to speak a boundary. I need to move away or we're really awkward. And that was part of the subtitle of this. It's going to be so awkward for a while there. Were, we went in and looked at an office. Um, my, my partner is a, a central worker. She's an acupuncturist and um, she's needing to change offices. And we were looking at a place and there was this guy and we always dance together. Like we, and we do contact improv, we roll, we hug, you know, it's like when he's in the dance space, it's fun to be around him. And it was so awkward. Like we're getting out of the car and he's standing there and he's like, yeah, we're doing the social distancing thing. <laughs> And it was really helpful for him to speak of that. I was like, oh, okay. And we both, we all relaxed. And as we moved through the space, there was just, there was ease. It was awkward, but it wasn't reactive. And that's, I, I hope for more of that for all of us. Anything that you'd like to add as we, as we bring this to a close for now? Yeah, I would love to just do a little tapping on that because things are changing. We're gradually reopening. Some places open, then they find more cases and they kind of pull back. Like it's a it's a very odd dance and nobody knows the steps yet. This is the first time our world has danced this particular dance in this day and age. So mm -hmm. if you would like to just join me, Karate Chop, even though this is really strange. Even though this is really strange. And really kind of awkward. And, and so totally awkward. It's the first time we've danced this dance. It's the first time we've danced this dance in my life. And the music keeps changing. And the music keeps changing. Maybe we're not doing anything wrong. <sighs> Maybe we aren't doing anything wrong. Top of the head, this feels really awkward. This feels really awkward. I really don't know what to do day to day. I don't know what to do day to day all the time.
side of the eye. I don't know what other people expect. I definitely don't know what other people expect. Under the eye. I'm going to follow my own inner guidance. I'm going to follow my own inner guidance. Under the nose, the best information I can find. Best information I can find. Chin, and maybe I'll accept that we might trip over each other's feet once in a while. <laughs> we might trip over each other's feet once in a while or bump into each other by accident. Color bone, and it might be really awkward. And it might be really awkward. Under them, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Top of the head and love and accept others as much as I can. And love and accept others as much as I can. Nice deep breath. <sighs> and I just like, again, I really appreciate that you showed up for this. And even like, this talk where we're giving you the best points we can think of for helping your primitive brain relax, your survival brain relax, we're, we're telling you what we think works best. And we really do invite you to be in tune with what's right for your body, your guidance. None of us have been through a global pandemic in the modern age. I mean, it's happened in, two, in 1918, there was the Spanish flu, but nobody's been through this where we have Zoom and Facebook and instant communication so we're all figuring this out as we go and it's new it's okay for it to be awkward when we first learned to tie our shoes we probably made some knots it's okay for us to figure this out as we go so if you can if you're a little more gentle with yourself even one percent rick uses the analogy a lot that even a one percent change if you go from ten, a 10 to a 9.9 .9, it changes your tra trajectory and if you were, imagine a plane that was originally going from LA to New York, a 1% change might take it to someplace else entirely. So that you're giving yourself the gift of a little bit of a change in trajectory, a little more relaxation, a little more clarity. That's a beautiful thing for you walking through the world. And again, calm is contagious. If other people see people being a little more calm and a little more responsive, it gives them a doorway to let themselves de-escalate a little bit out of the fear. And I think right now that's the biggest gift we can give anybody. So I really appreciate you showing up, looking at these things and helping make the world a place that I wanna live in. Hopefully you wanna live in too. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you all for being a part of the circle, for sharing this energy. Your wisdom matters as you have experiences and things that are showing up for you, please feel free to share that with us as a group and as a community. Um, support at thrivingnow.com is always open and we try to reflect and amplify the wisdom from our circle. It is a shared experience for us. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Little, oh, before you end, I'm just, I'm putting a virtual cuddle party link. Um, Monique Darling and I are running a virtual cuddle party right after this. Um, at, or in, a, in another hour um, or so. And we invite you to come play with us if you've never been to a cuddle party. It's a great way to get some of your touch needs met, even though it's virtual. So um, we just, I just wanted to share that with you if that interests you. So. Mm, thank you very much. I'm just 